football and baseball, when you look at the spectrum of propaganda, at least it's human competition, it's athleticism, there's something good there. Compared to gangster rap and Suge Knight getting shot and MTV in the mid-90s, on record, I've talked to former MTV executives, rock stars, multiple top hip-hop people off record, some of them on record. KRS One, one of the founders of hip hop, Professor Griff, you name it, and they and, and Professor Griff's gone on record. They come to people and they say, "You're going to promote cop killer stuff. You're going to promote gangster drug dealing culture. Your stuff's not going to get played on MTV or the radio." And when you say, "No, I won't do that," you don't get played. Now, why would they do that? You get everybody to dress up like thugs, have a thug culture, have your pants hanging down around your ankles, go out, and the cops see you, and they know you're listening to cop killer music. What does that do? It primes you immediately to wear an enemy uniform and to be inducted directly into the private prisons that write the state laws that if you want to get our funding, you got to build more prisons. And talk about mind control, they have turned the whole world into thug culture. Because see, American culture, Steve McQueen, John Wayne, that was the bait for the world. The, the world adopted American culture by the 50s. The globalists were masters. Edward Bernays wrote about this. The bait, the, you know, the tasty worm was John Wayne didn't know, God, God love him. And Steve McQueen didn't know and all them and the rest of them. But then once the public was hooked on it, the whole world, hey, guess what? We're going to give you Satan worship music, and we're going to give you kill cops, run around and sling drugs, and have big grills on your teeth so you stand out like an idiot so you can get killed or, or on drugs or put in a giant FEMA camp, and you elect to dress up in the uniform of someone that trained attack dog police with military training are coming after you to put you in a dungeon. And, and you let your kid dress up in stupid hip-hop gangster punk outfit, people that bend over, you know, in, 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 in prison, meaning you're the male that plays the part of a female, and the youth wear that saying, I'm ready, I'm inducted as a punk to be gang-raped and given HIV in prison. The globalist, total genius masters. You pay money to go be part of it, you're inducted straight in to be given HIV, and the cops don't even know it. All they know is these people want to kill us. My God, they're running around robbing, stealing, burning things down. Get ready. Uh, they're killing cops. All right, you see how they play the whole thing off. Whole thing like genius. Just like they advertise for Al-Qaeda being the coolest thing in the world in the media in the Middle East. And all the young Muslims go join it. They're working for the globalists, the CIA. I uh, jumped the gun, as I often do. I'm going to spend a little bit of time next hour talking about Suge Knight shot at Sunset Strip Club during Chris Brown party. Two others hit. And, of course, he was there when many of the people he brought into gangster hip-hop uh, were also shot and killed. Uh, Biggie, uh, Tupac. I mean, I barely even follow this stuff, but I'm aware of what's going on. I just have been contacted over the years by some of the most famous founders of hip-hop uh, out there. The folks with Public Enemy. Uh, we've interviewed quite a few of them. Uh, Professor Griff and others. Of course, the Karis one and others. But then I separately, with high level, multiple high-level household name rock stars who were in MTV in the mid-90s and early 90s from their perspective, they were being told, sorry, we don't care if you're number one or number two. We're going to promote death rap, basically. That's the orders coming down from the government. But I've discussed a lot here on air about weaponized culture, weaponized media. How sports has been designed for thousands of years to politically divert the masses from real issues so that men won't try to be politically active to better their lot and their family's lot, but that they'll be obsessed with the local horse races or gladiatorial events or baseball or football in the year 2014. Not saying it's inherently bad in and of itself, but it's deployed to control you and to fill the gap in men's brains that is designed for strategy and designed for being involved. You should be worrying about getting a better job, being more successful, taking care of your family, how the world really works, how to protect your liberties and freedoms, how to stop combines from starting monopolies that shut you down. 
Instead, you want to know about fantasy football. And women just want to run around and think they get ahead if they put their man down. Because that's the message. Put your man down, you get ahead. Dominate the man, you get ahead. No, dominate the globalists, create a free market, build a good society, raise good children, then your family gets ahead. But it's all a bunch of so-called individuals. See, they attack individualism if it isn't what the state wants. Individual freedom. But when they call it individualism, they mean only worry about yourself. And nobody pushes being more self-centered, more goblin-like than the whole music industry with the hardcore rock and roll degrading women and men, the drugs, the, you know, the Satanism. But that wasn't hardcore enough by the mid-90s. Sumner Redstone, Viacom, MTV, <sighs> on record. I've talked to top people. It's been documented. Uh, books have been written on the subject. Professor Griff, Karras, one, so many others. They came in and they said, we're not going to have hip-hop about empowering inner-city communities and getting true, you know, equality. We're going to fund gangster rap, hip-hop, thug rap, just like the CIA shipped cocaine into the inner cities to start an implosion. Then by the early and mid-90s, they shipped in Suge Knight and, 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 and Biggie and, and Tupac and all these people that got whacked out and killed because of the devilish culture they were putting out and that it's cool to sling the rock and have the hose and the, and the grill and everything else. And that's how you're a man <coughs> is not taking care of your family, but not caring about anybody but yourself. And how many of these guys get gunned down? How many of them get killed? How many of them? And they sell the idea. The only way you get ahead is being a hip hop rapper, an OG, an original gangster, how good it feels to be a gangster. Or you're a football or baseball or basketball player. Only a few thousand slots to be in any of those places, but people think that's how you're successful. And then meanwhile, you fall in as the cannon fodder to use the drugs, to sell the drugs, to be jokes, to be primed for prison, ready to be rolled into the giant private prisons, which they segregate by black, white, and Hispanic, and Asian just like they're segregating the country, according to that, and the government's the referee protecting everyone from the gang culture that was sent like a psychic or psychological warfare torpedo in to destroy all these people. It is a demonic, sickening, arrogant, narcissistic, bloated, degenerate culture that you see being pushed by the hip-hop culture. It is absolute death, and it's taken black communities in the 50s with lower illegitimacy than were in the white communities to a world record of 90 to 91 or even higher percentage points. And now you see weird rap-style gangster country music and weird gangster-style rock and roll. It is so out of control. I'm sorry the other callers, I'm out of time. But we'll be back tomorrow, live, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. By the way, you have experienced the Alex Jones experience. Joe Rogan is on tomorrow. I'm gonna, I taped an interview with him when he was here last week. We hung out. That's going to be on tomorrow, and the rest will be on the nightly news tomorrow. But we'll be back, 11 a.m. Central, live. Spread the word about this transmission, folks, because you are the resistance. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.